Good morning, everyone. I'm Allison Battistel. Hi, I'm Richard Alves. And um, <laughs> we are missing Joanna Altman today, who also teaches US history, but not this quarter. Awesome. Um, Battistel, can you tell us a little bit about US history? I can, Alves. Um, US history typically uh, runs the entire year. This is not a typical year, however. So um, we are going to be doing two quarters of US history. We will have, if you're starting with US history quarter one, then you'll come back to us quarter three, and then quarter two and quarter four um, for, a, for a full semester equivalent to a, a year of US history. Um, as far as content goes, we are going to focus on teaching students um, how systemic inequities have sort of evolved throughout the, the history of um, what we call the United States. So we'll have sort of four main units. We'll start with um, indigenous people and what's now known as the Americas. We'll talk about black experiences in the United States. Um, we'll talk about the struggle for women's rights um, this is the 100 year anniversary of the 19th Amendment being passed. And we will talk about um, immigrant experiences in the United States. So those will kind of be the, the four main units. How is that learning going to look this year? All right, so we're gonna have two main ways in which students have access to class materials. And the most major one is going to be synchronous learning. And um, what this means is that we're gonna have scheduled times where students will uh, show up to a Google Meet organized by their teachers, and um, instruction will be delivered directly through a Google Meet format, kind of like you're seeing here. Um, and that schedule is hopefully made available to you at another place, but um, here's just a quick look. Try to zoom it in here. So you can see on Monday, there's a synchronous class from 8.30 to 9.30. Um, where people in period one will all tune in at the same time. Uh, directly following that, there's some office hours and then another synchronous class, 10.15 to 11.15. So students will become familiar with this schedule. Um, there's actually an editable version of it out there that um, they will have access to in week one of school where we encourage them to fill in their classes um, with links so that all they have to do is click on the link and they'll be able to show up at these classes. Um, all synchronous classes are from 8.30 to 9.30 and 10.15 to 11.15. Um, everything else will be either office hours on when, or a community meeting on Wednesday or um, asynchronous classes in the afternoon. More on that here in a minute. And if they miss a synchronous class, students are okay because they're all being recorded. So. Right, we'll record them and post them in Google Classroom. So if they miss a class, they can um, get in there, click on the link and see exactly what we did. So um, what will synchronous lessons look like, Batista? Uh Well, uh, uh, depending on your teacher, um, I guess a lot like this, you students will be able to see the teacher live and, and um, interact with the teacher. Um, everything, again, is done through Google Classroom. Your teacher may put you into small groups, breakout groups um, synchronously. Um, so yeah, it will look very similar to live class, just uh, live class in life, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> right. And of course, it's a learning curve. So probably as the year goes on, we'll be able to do um, more and more intricate lessons, you know, as we learn how to navigate the technology a little bit better. Right. Expect basics probably initially. <laughs> and then um, we're all just going to try to do our best here. What about uh, asynchronous learning? What's that going to look like? All right. So asynchronous learning is kind of like the activities that help students build understanding in a subject area, but it's not live classes. So we will post links uh, in Google Classroom that will give students access to those things. So um, this could be like readings, videos. Um, other types of things that they can work on without the teacher being present. So and then like oftentimes, time. sorry, go ahead. It's kind of like class work time. Exactly. And um, a lot of times the asynchronous lessons will either like 
review or preview what we cover in the synchronous lessons. Um, how can students gain access to all of these lessons? There is a link in students' Google Classrooms right at the very top. They'll automatically, fingers crossed, be loaded into uh, Google Classrooms. They won't need to wait for the codes. Um, so then they'll go into their specific classes, and right at the top, there's a Google Meets link that they will click on to join. In fact, I think I can show you uh, what that'll look like here in a Perfect. second. So if you go to a Google Classroom, which all of your students will have um, their classes in their Google Classroom tab up here. Um, I'll go to one of my classes here. You can see right off at the very top, there's a link that says Google Meet. And that will be the link that they use every time they have a synchronous class um, in that course. For the asynchronous materials, we'll just post them in the feed in Google Classroom. So students will be able to access materials there uh, on their own time. You know, there's um, times carved out on the schedule for asynchronous learning down here, um, but it doesn't necessarily need to be 12.30 to two o'clock. Students can tune in at their own time um, to get that work done. And if students have questions about their asynchronous learning or what they just learned synchronously, how do they ask their teachers those questions? That's a great question. So um, we have, of course, you can email your teacher at any time, just like normal, but um, we also have specific office hours set up to meet with students directly uh, via Google Meets. There's a couple different ways that this could happen. Um, most of the time it will probably be uh, where students can schedule a meeting um, after their synchronous class. So again, going back to the schedule, um, if you look here, say on Monday, we'll have our period one synchronous class from 8.30 to 9.30, and then it's followed by period one office hours. So students could sign up in that 9.30 to 10 o'clock um, time period to meet one-on-one -on -one with their teacher probably for 10 minutes or so to discuss a particular issue. Um, sometimes that might just be an open link where any students who want to continue um, directly after period one can just stay in there and ask questions together in a group. Um, so there's a couple different ways that that could probably look. But long story short, office hours are a 30 minute period directly after synchronous classes where students can get help with anything they need in that class. And there's also a chunk of office hours on Wednesday, correct? There's like an hour. Yeah, so on Wednesday, we have um, a community meeting, which is like a homeroom class where the same group of students will meet with the same teacher every Wednesday uh, for the entire semester, at least maybe the entire year. And then um, there's an office hour period, an hour long, 1045 to 1145. Great. Um, cool. So, um, how's so grading going to allow their teachers as usual? Of course. Time, right. And just don't necessarily expect an email back right away, especially if you're emailing at 2 a.m. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, how's grading going to work in U.S. history, Battistil? Well, the name of the game this year is going to be um, flexibility in a lot of areas. Um, work will come in sort of two forms or will be classified in two ways one assignment and then the other assessment um, and assignments are kind of uh, the practice and assessments are where students have sort of, um, consolidated their skills and produced something um, to show their their learning um, and assignments are worth 40 percent of their total grade and assessments are worth 60% of their total grade. So if at the end kids are scrambling, they should probably be focusing on assessments because they get a little bit more bang for the buck as far as their overall grade um, goes. What happens if they turn in work late? Well, we're going to obviously encourage students to try to get work in on time, but um, because of the nature of everything right now, we're definitely going to be flexible. Um, and we're gonna make sure that all late work is turned in by November 10th, which in the first quarter happens to be one week before the end of the quarter. Um, that said, we will be notifying students uh, if they're falling behind in class and parents will also get notifications in Google Classroom 
uh, when their students turn in or do not turn in specific assignments by the due date. So um, there should be a lot of communication, ways for uh, students to be aware if they're missing assignments and what they need to do to get them done. Great. So I'm not parents, if you have questions of your students' teachers, send an email. Um, you are also able to access office hours, so we can chat with you then. And if you have any questions, yeah, let us know. Anything else, Alves? No, we, we really look forward to uh, getting to know you next week. And uh, let's make the best of this. <laughs>